After Vladimir Putin announced the invasion of Ukraine in 2022, countries around the world imposed unprecedented economic sanctions on Russia. Within weeks, such brands as Adidas, McDonald's, Shell and Starbucks suspended their operations in Russia, and a couple of months later, they all exited the Russian market entirely. The Financial Times estimated that European businesses alone lost 100 billion euros, and the Dutch beer brand Heineken even sold their Russian business for a whopping one dollar. Sanctions were supposed to stifle or even bankrupt the Russian economy. However, a year and a half later, it doesn't seem to be the case. There haven't been any food shortages, and the poverty rate appears to have continued dropping. Moreover, mere months into the war, a concern over the effectiveness of sanctions on the Russian economy began growing. At the same time, other people around the world have noticed the effects of the war on their lives, for instance, in the growing prices of gasoline and energy. Today, we will look at the different types of sanctions that were imposed on Russia, how it managed to circumvent the pressure of the sanctions, and what the future holds for the Russian economy. Russia did not begin being sanctioned in 2022. The first round of sanctions related to the war in Ukraine were imposed back in 2014. Soon after the Russian conducted illegal Crimea referendum and the subsequent annexation of the Ukrainian peninsula, the EU and the United States introduced travel bans on Russian government officials and froze $527 million worth of assets of Bank Russia, the Kremlin's preferred bank. In July of 2014, following the shooting down of Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 by Russian-backed separatist forces in eastern Ukraine, a new round of more severe economic sanctions against Russia was imposed, hitting more banks and freezing more of Putin's elite's assets. However, back then the sanctions were aimed at warning President Putin against further aggression rather than causing serious trouble for the Russian economy. Even though Western countries did not recognize Crimea as part of Russia, it did not stop the Kremlin from treating the peninsula as its territory. Moreover, most world countries, including the United States and members of the European Union, largely ignored the proxy war in Donbas until the full-scale invasion of Ukraine was launched in 2022. In the 2010s, Western countries were still heavily dependent on importing Russian oil, natural gas and coal, so it made sense that they were trying to maintain long-established trade partnership with Russia for as long as they could. If the sanctions imposed between 2014 and 22 were intended to deter further aggression against Ukraine, clearly they did not work. Weeks before the invasion, on February 24th, President Biden warned Vladimir Putin about the consequences that would follow if he were to invade Ukraine. But it was too late for that. Biden kept his word and many countries around the world imposed numerous sanctions on Russia. As a result, 2022 became the year when Russia surpassed Iran as the most sanctioned country in the world. And yet, the Russian economy has not collapsed. In fact, it doesn't seem to be suffering all that much. The country's GDP decline in 2022 was 2.1%, and the European Council estimates that it will drop to 2.5% by the end of 2023. Many Western companies exited the Russian market and seized all experts. However, the Russian economic institutions were able to stave off a serious crisis by raising the key interest rate, substituting imported goods from Europe and the US with those from China, India and Iran, as well as arranging parallel import schemes. Russia's bilateral trade with China between January and May of 2023 increased by 40.7% compared to the same period a year before. This graph shows how Russia's oil exports to the EU, China and India changed since the invasion of Ukraine. Moreover, after such companies as McDonald's and IKEA left the Russian market, new local companies took their place, such as Vkusna i Tochka, Tasty, period, instead of McDonald's, and Good Luck, instead of IKEA. 
Both companies do not seem to be fitting substitutes for their predecessors, at least when it comes to popularity. When it comes to munitions and arms, Russia used to import a great deal of weapon parts from Western countries. However, much of this import ceased after February 24, 2022, although not all. Le Monde's report from June of 2023 indicates that there are still 155 Western companies supplying missile parts to Russia. Two-thirds of these companies are American. At the same time, Vladimir Putin established closer ties with Iran, which began selling Shahed-136 combat drones to Russia that have been terrorizing Ukrainian cities and civilian populations. North Korea, at the same time, has been helping Russia replenish its ammunition supplies as many weapons in the DPRK are built from the same Soviet blueprints as modern Russian armaments. China has also been alleged to supply Russia with the so-called dual-use goods, which it then uses to produce weaponry. However, the United States Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, claimed he received assurances that China is not and will not provide lethal assistance to Russia for use in Ukraine. All of this does not paint a very gloomy picture for Russia. It seems that it was able to successfully reroute its trade routes to Asia, find substitutes for Western products, although not everything needed substituting, and arrange supply chains for its war with Ukraine. However, a lot of it is just the government trying to make it seem as if Russia is as stable as ever and that it does not need the West to thrive. But this is not the case. Recently, the national currency has reached its lowest value since the beginning of the war. This prompted the central bank to raise the country's key interest rate to 12% to compare the US key interest rate today is 5.5%, which was only reached as a measure to fight the current high level of inflation. The ruble's devaluation had been caused by a growing mistrust in Putin's economic policy and the country's future. Since February of 2022, many Russian businessmen as well as government officials and propagandists were placed under travel bans and had many of their foreign assets frozen. While there have been many comments claiming that the so-called Russian elite will have to vacation in China and get their luxurious goods from there too, it appears that the only person still preoccupied with expensive products is the president himself, who has been paying for various jobs to be done on his super yacht ironically named Graceful. Человек, который начал эту войну, тратит 3 миллиарда просто на ремонт и закупки для яхты. At the same time, former owner of Russian Tinkoff Bank, Oleg Tinkoff, was able to have the British individual sanctions against him lifted. What seems to have helped him was a strong anti-war stance, as well as being forced to sell his Russian business way below market price. Дорогие мои предприниматели, соотечественники, перестаньте быть трусами. Ну чего вы так этого Путина боитесь? Господи, ну что он с вами сделает? It appears that this event already had an effect on other Russian businessmen, as Arkady Volosh, co-founder of the Russian version of Google, Yandex, recently came out with a statement slamming Russia's invasion of Ukraine, having earlier resigned as Yandex CEO. Individual sanctions were designed to urge the Russian businessmen and government officials to distance themselves from Putin and condemn the war in Ukraine so as to disrupt the operations of both the Russian economy and government. In the end, Western sanctions have not achieved a total collapse of the Russian economy or a mass abandonment of the Kremlin by economic and political elites. However, there is still hope because slowly but surely the sanctions are placing a good deal of pressure on the Russian economy and government. And more people are denouncing the current regime. Putin's Russia does not offer anyone, including those loyal to it, a real vision of a prosperous future and that needs to be made apparent to those who are working to keep the war ongoing and the regime working. What the sanctions ought to do is show those close to Putin that their future would be better, although not ideal, if they choose to abandon their president now. They will not be let off the hook, however, they would be able to stand a fair trial, something that Putin's system would never allow.